G'day, my name is David Troy, and this is the David Troy Salon. And I, man, yep, I need a haircut, that's for sure. Look at crap today. So listen, in this episode, got a couple of questions we're going to answer, and um, yeah, so let's just jump right into it. Real quick disclaimer. I don't claim to know everything about this industry. The questions that I answer, I can only answer on my own experience and knowledge of being in the industry for 20 years, having been in 20 different countries. So uh, if I'm wrong on any of these, I do apologize. So take it as the best of my I'll answer these questions to the best of my ability. And I hope you understand that um, I try not to claim to know 100% about anything because we always constantly so Laurie asks, why are Brazilian blowouts so expensive and is it better to condition your hair first then shampoo? So this is sort of a two-part question um, which I found, let me just back it up there a little bit so you can see me, um, which I found really interesting. The first part of this question, why uh, about the Brazilian blowouts, um, look at it, from what I understand a Brazilian blowout should take about 80 minutes Three hours later. to do in a salon. Um, and the time frame that it takes is normally the cost, you know, with the product used. Why is it so expensive? It, it really breaks down, it comes down to the amount of time you're in the salon and the time it takes a stylist to do the service. Um, time is money, as they say. So uh, it should take about 80 minutes from start to finish, uh, so they say. Five hours later. Um, and it costs anywhere from $150 to $400 to receive a Brazilian blowout across the board. Um, I know I'm sort of uh, going on, but I think, think the answer to the, the question, more or less, is time is money in a salon. So, so the amount of time that it takes is really why it is so expensive. It, it really comes down to that and you, I believe you have to be certified to perform, perform a Brazilian blowout or maybe you don't. Um, I actually am not a big fan of Brazilian blowouts. I hope that answers your question or the start of the question. The, the second part of the question, if you're doing a treatment to oppose a um, just an everyday shampoo and conditioner. Yes, you should always shampoo your hair first before conditioning. You know, the conditioner closes the cuticle on the hair and um, prevents it from, you know, getting damaged. Um, but if you're doing an Olaplex treatment or you're doing a, you know, protein treatment or uh, keratin treatment, yeah, it, it is better to do the treatment and then I believe, you know, shampooing it out definitely is the best way to go to make sure all that product it comes out of the hair but still again going back and sealing the cuticle with just a really light conditioner so i hope that answered your question but i know i'm rambling on and i know this is going to be cut and cut and cut and squeezed all in and moved around and hopefully um i'll get it in order so by the time you're watching this it will make sense because sometimes they're just blah blah blah. You know what's really crazy about the whole Brazilian blowout? Um, it actually only lasts 10 to 12 weeks. So Kara asks, do you have any tips on foiling long hair? I love doing it but it takes such a long time. You know I loved this question. I think a lot of people struggle with um, long hair and foiling long hair. Um, so what typically what I do, um, I actually don't use foils. When the hair gets beyond the point of being able to close a foil, what I, what we use or what I use is from, if you go out to your local office depot store and pick up these 12 by 12 foam sheets, um, they're, they're really not that expensive. And we, I cut them in half so it's really flimsy but the best way to foil long hair is by balayage um, i find painting it on and you can still weave out sections and paint it on hair 
The true balayage, you wouldn't typically use anything to separate it, but I find that with painting it on, it's better to have that separation to stop the bleeding, to stop it hitting the other hair. But the next time I do one of these, I will video it and post it. Um, I just use these. And the, another tip I have for long hair, uh, when, we, when we do long hair or balayage long hair, it, a lot of people are constantly putting their tools down. And you know, it's crazy. When I foil hair, I always hang on to the comb, I hang on to my clips. I, I very rarely drop or put something down on the tray purely because if you calculate the time that you're putting a comb down and picking it up on the course of actually doing a full service, it's a big chunk of time. So, you know, another one is just to hang on to your equipment or, or learn to basically cut down your times that way. Um, you know, and, and the cool thing about that is when you do figure out how long it takes to actually make that motion, um, it's amazing the time that you, you take to, or the time you save. So if you're new to my channel <clears throat> and you like my content, are you kidding me? No one's going to like this because you're so boring. I would love you to check out some of my other videos. Um, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you know when I upload. No one's going to subscribe because it's so hard to be yourself on camera. So next. And put my last video right here go check that out and let me know what you think I think that you suck on video Don't forget, if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer, I would love to get a few more questions from you guys. I know, um... Blah, blah. Man, this one's been really hard for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I think it's that fear of coming across as, you know, I think I know everything. Um, which is stupid because I obviously don't. And, uh... But, so yeah, anyway, so if you're new to the industry and you have questions about hair, the industry, running a salon, what it takes, um, you know, to work behind the chair, you know, shoot me, shoot me a question. I'm happy to answer anything, you know. <laughs>